there, everyone. My name is Avra Robinson, and I am an instructor with EdTech Teacher. And I'm joined today by my colleague Rosie McQuillan, who's also an instructor with EdTech Teacher. Hi, everyone. Glad to be here with you, Avra, to talk about um, the opportunities that Padlet allows for differentiation. So Rosie and I have a lot of conversations. We sit and get into deep conversations when we're traveling together doing ed tech teacher workshops. And we decided that, you know, we thought some of our ideas were pretty good. So we thought we might start recording some of these conversations. And we've created a couple web series. Um, we did one back in December, January timeframe, where we talked about um, G Suite for education and how it provides so many opportunities for differentiation. And lately, we've been falling in love with Padlet and the new updates that Padlet um, provides, as well as the old stuff that Padlet's had forever. So we thought we would just start talking about some of these ideas, and hopefully um, they will spur an idea in you. And if you have additional ideas beyond ours, we sure hope that you'll reach out to us um, on social media or an email, and that way we can keep the conversation going. The piece that we should probably um, talk about is that Padlet is a web-based tool or an iPad application. So what you see today, you can do on either device. Yeah, that's a really good point. And just so you know, for the purpose of this video, we're kind of expecting that you know Padlet. We're not going to walk you through like how to create a Padlet wall or any of that, um, those kind of step-by-step -step procedures. But that's definitely something we can help you with. If you are brand new to Padlet, please feel free to reach out to us if you need help. We do have tutorials um, that EdTech Teacher provides, and we would love to help you in any way. But just we are kind of expecting a little bit of working knowledge as we get started. Right. I also have a blog that's on our EdTech Teacher um, website that will help you get started with some of the templates on um, that are used in Padlet. Okay. Well, you know, there are, uh, people talk about differentiation, and it seems to mean different things to different people. But I think um, Caroline Tomlinson probably says it best. There are really three key components. You know, what is it that you want the the student? What is the content? What is the process and how do they demonstrate that understanding? And in a nutshell, that's what we're going to talk about. Because when you're talking differentiation, you're talking about keeping the same high standards for all the students in your classroom. You're not talking about modifying the curriculum. You're talking about different ways students have voice and choice. So guys, um, when you when we look at Padlet, and we're gonna you know talk about differentiation with Padlet, just as a quick overview, you know what is it? So basically, um, it's a digital bulletin board. It's a digital blackboard of sorts, but it can be used for a variety of purposes. For sure, it can be. Yeah, you know the ability for a variety of learning mediums all in the same place. The ability for teachers to have to differentiate lesson delivery, whether it's text, whether it's video, whether it's um, images or audio. It, it's amazing. It just allows for learner variability. Yeah, we've, been, we've just been so incredibly impressed with some of the new updates. So it used to just be a board and you could basically put text up there and maybe an attachment like a video or um, an image. But now there's like Rosie was saying, there's audio, there's a drawing component. Um, so it's just really fantastic. And that's kind of what we want to step by step through um, in this in this video series. So to begin with, you know, just some ideas, ways that teachers are using it in their classrooms. They're using it for mind mapping. They're using it for back channeling, communicating with parents. Rosie was telling me about um, a teacher she knows who's using it as a, as a newsletter, a weekly newsletter. I also have a teacher that uses it for his um, weekend news, and it's actually a family project where students can upload an image of something they did over the weekend and then either add text or an audio or a video explaining exactly what they did. I think about the number of times as an educator that we ask kids to write about what they did over the weekend. And so often they don't remember. So this is a great opportunity to have an asynchronous learning opportunity for um, students and parents. I love that idea. I do too. What a neat way to create a community yeah. of learners. That's awesome. Um, so anyway, there's lots of ideas, guys, but we'll go ahead and dive into just kind of what a Padlet wall looks like. So. Padlet walls can have a variety of backgrounds. This one, I just chose the blackboard or chalkboard, old fashioned chalkboard look. Um, and what I did is I went ahead and put um, a note here in the middle. This is just an image, but it gives you an idea. So 
these notes are smaller usually and um, they, the Padlet walls are endless, so you can have as many notes as you'd like. And what students get the opportunity to do, opportunity to do, um, is write a title and then write something. And then we're going to talk about each of these different icons because they all do separate things. But we'll get to that kind of in our next video. Um, Barbara, just if you want to stop there one minute. The yeah. other thing about Padlet is it can um, students can remain anonymous if that's how the direction is given. Think of those students that never really raise their hand and maybe won't venture out, but could actually put something on a Padlet wall that um, doesn't identify them as the learner. That's a fantastic point. So yeah, our introverted students, that's a way exactly. for them to be able to share. Yeah, absolutely. And I've seen that happen so many times. Students that won't raise their hand in class necessarily um, sometimes are, are much more extroverted in in an online or in a digital world for sure we also see that when we provide professional development for um teachers that's absolutely true isn't that true absolutely people that are a little unsure of um you know is their comment correct are they heading in the right direction so it allows you to venture put your toe in the water without you know stepping all the way in yeah that's a that's a neat analogy you're absolutely right so um, as, as you make a Padlet wall, these are the options you get. And, you know, Rosie and I were talking about just how there's just so many opportunities for differentiation just with these different layouts. So you've got something like the wall, which is just basically like um, bricks, you know, in a wall. And then, then there's the canvas, which allows you to create notes and then connect them. So Rosie, talk about that for a minute. Well, what it allows you to do is create a mind map. Um, where you can move sticky notes to facilitate um, the creation of a mind map and then um, you can make visual connections among those concepts and synthesize the information all in one place. This could be something done collaboratively or it could be something done individually. And again, you can, um, it helps the learners to see relationships between concepts and it can be done synchronously or asynchronously. So that's um, something that's relatively new in Padlet is that central concept map. Yeah, that's fantastic. And the shelf also. So the shelf, yeah. guys, is like columns. And so you can you start with a header that the teacher creates of each column, and then students can post notes into the specific columns. We use that a lot when we're using visual thinking routines and the fact that you can actually set up a shelf to ask very three distinct questions or I think of some of our elementary teachers that use it as a KWL chart. Exactly. So what do we know? What do we want to know? What do we want to learn? Yeah, that kind of thing. Or what have we learned, I should say. So absolutely. So the, the layouts to begin with um, in Padlet are just an awesome way to differentiate for students. Exactly. Because again, even in that layout, students have the opportunity to um, answer whether they answer in text, whether they draw, whether they add a video or an audio, which we will go into in more detail, but it lets everybody choose their learning medium and hopefully, um, you know, increase engagement. Right. Because we now have given them the opportunity to choose which way they can respond. Right. Exactly. So in our next video, this was kind of an introduction, and we're going to talk about one more thing before we say goodbye to this video. But, you know, we're going to talk about how Padlet, um, we've kind of alluded to it already, but how all of these tools in Padlet really allow students to have access to content, whether the, the teacher is giving the content out or whether they're exploring content and going and searching for information. So much of it can happen right within the Padlet wall now. Um, and students have a choice, like Rosie was just saying, about how they demonstrate what they understand. The other thing about it is not only can a student demonstrate what they know, but it allows the teacher to provide directions in more than one way. I think of that student that perhaps need the directions more than one time. So they could get audio directions from their teacher who is the familiar person that gives directions every day in their classroom. So it's almost like having your teacher at home with you or again, listening to them over and over. Yeah, 
Exactly. We'll talk more about that when we get to the audio recording for sure. Um, so the one thing we want to mention as we kind of finish up this section of the video series, guys, is that even though this isn't a huge differentiation piece, one of the new updates to, um, <laughs> to Padlet is, is a profanity filter. So we're... <laughs> We're loving this. over here. <laughs> yeah, we're loving this because, um, you know, we we know that we've got students in there that are going to push the limits. And, um, and moderation has always been an option in Padlet, meaning that teachers can turn on moderation and see everyone's posts before they post out there to the public wall where all of the students can see each other's work. But, um, but now we've got a profanity filter. So if a student were to type a word that was inappropriate, like I did here in this little example, I won't tell you what I typed, but um, it turned out to be this little emoji with this little, um, with like the bad symbols in front of his mouth, that those characters that, that represent swear words. So, um, so yeah, this is just something that we thought we would mention. And um, so this was just an introduction. We didn't want each video to be too long. That way you can watch them um, as your time allows. But in the next video, we're definitely going to explore a variety of different um, ways that the tools and some of the old tools and some of the new tools in Padlet can, can really provide some awesome opportunities for students in the classroom. Fantastic. And teaching opportunities. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Teachers and students. It's such an awesome tool. So we hope that you'll join us, guys, for the rest of the, of the web series, and we hope that you'll stay in touch with us on social media. And until we see you again, have a good one. Take care.